So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Barbero, and I'm working at OBO, a French company. Uh, we are upstairs in front of the restaurant if you want to, to see us. Uh, today we'll talk about EMF Compare, but first of all, I would like to talk a little bit about the Le Louvre and why I chose uh, these pictures uh, as my first slide. It's because EMF Compare is about computing differences, and when you compute differences, you are computing deltas. So I thought it was a good idea uh, to, to use the Louvre. Um, so first question, it's for you. Uh, who know uh, what is EMF? OK, every, almost everyone. Uh, for people who don't know, just uh, think about EMF as a framework for Java beans on steroid. So when I will say, uh, I will talk about EMF model, just think of data structure done with almost Pojo. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it is precisely what we will not talk about. Um, what we will talk about is about computing differences and computing changes. Um, you may be used to this kind of uh, comparison editor uh, to merge, uh, to diff and merge a textual change. So I will merge, meld, and obviously, the Eclipse text compare editor. Uh, actually, EMF compare is working pretty much the same way as uh, this kind of tool. So it took, it takes uh, two EMF models as input, and by combining them, it computes a comparison and outputs uh, its results, um, from which you will be able to do some merge operation between your model. And uh, great news, it also works in three ways. So you can compare three models with one common ancestor, and then you will be able to have conflict between your models. So you will be very happy with that, um, because solving conflicts on model may be quite hard. Um, EMF Compare uh, is not only the engine. It's also uh, the integration with Eclipse. Uh, it is very well integrated with, with the Eclipse team API, so it means it works seamlessly with uh, CVS, EGIT, and almost subversive. Uh, we're still struggling with subversive, but it's uh, an ongoing work. And uh, as a tagline, if I have to introduce EMF Compare uh, with few words, it would be that if you can inject uh, any data with, uh, within EMF as an EMF data, EMF Compare will let you diff and merge those data for free. But today, uh, I want to show you some use cases of EMF Compare, which are not, not related to uh, how to handle um, different version of a model uh, in a source code management repository. So I would like to show you how you can compare arbitrary uh, structured data. I want to show you how you can use EMF Compare to handle binary compatibility uh, break a breakage uh, when you evolve your API. And finally, I want to show you how it can help you to define incremental transformation uh, with your model. So first thing first, uh, let's go with the structured data comparison example. Did you ever have to compare XML file uh, with a text editor? Yeah, so you, you may already have trouble <laughs> with that. It can be really a mess. Uh, but the thing is that an XML file has, uh, by nature, a model behind that. It is a DOM model. So if we can inject an XML file as an EMF model conforms to the, the DOM uh, specification, which is that a document contains a root element and elements can have sub-elements. And elements have attributes with uh, name and value. Uh, then I told you that EMF Compare will uh, be able to compare and merge those files for free for you. And this is exactly what we'll show now, what we'll see now. So uh, here I got uh, two uh, on files, actually. Uh, I took this from the Google Juice project. So I got two revision, and it's not very obvious to, to see the changes between those two files. And as you are expecting, if I compare it simply, I got the text comparison, and it's a mess to, to understand. 
So now, if I use a dedicated EMF resource to load this XML file as an EMF model um, conforms to the DOM uh, ECOR model, now I will have a structured uh, data with all my tag and the different uh, attributes for each tag, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now I got my XML file as an EMF model, and I can compare them with each other. As you see, uh, it is exactly the same um, comparison action that I launched. You don't have to go to some specific EMF comparison. We are integrated with Eclipse. So now you can see that the comparison is quite different from the XML one. There is a top pane where there, is a, there are all the differences that have been uh, computed uh, between the two models. And on the bottom pane, you have the, uh, the details of the changes. So here you can see that I added a node, a target uh, element on the right side. And I added also, I removed some property from the left side um, that um, I, uh, which one I wanted to show you. Yeah, that I, I removed uh, the description from this target and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not a huge improvement from uh, the text comparison, you will say. Uh, but it is just to show you the, the EMF compare uh, UI in the first time. Uh, so let's forget about that. Uh, the main thing when you are doing model, modeling is that you want to raise the, abstra the abstraction. So what if we do not consider of our ant file as an XML file, but as an ant model, <coughs> where we have some projects that contains target, and targets can cross-references uh, other targets and contain several different kinds of directive. So let's go back to our Eclipse. If I, want, if I consider our XML file as a NANT uh, model, now I get the concept of project and target. And I also have some tag targets that depends on other targets. So let's compare those two with EMF compare. And now you can see that the top, uh, the top pane is now displaying um, differences that have a higher level of semantics regarding your ANT files. Uh, it is not talking to you that you removed a node, but really that you added an exclude directive uh, in uh, the zip file set, or that you, that you added a dependency uh, to your target test.dist. You, you added a, target, uh, a dependency to the jar target and to the test compile target. So you have a high level semantic of changes. And you have this UI for free uh, once you inject your data in EMF. OK, first use case. Uh, now, how EMF compare can help you manage Java API evolution? If you ever try to uh, trace all the binary compatibility uh, breakage uh, during a Java development, and if you did it without any tooling, it may have trouble your vision uh, on the Java development. There are some documents, at least, uh, all the rules for not breaking uh, uh, binary compatibility. Here is an excerpt from this, uh, this wiki document on the Eclipse website, uh, which say basically that if you delete a method from uh, an interface, uh, there are no restrictions. You are always breaking compatibility, the binary con compatibility. And what is great in this document is that it starts from the change. And it is exactly what EMF Compare can provide you to compute the change between uh, things. And there, what we, the thing that we want uh, is the Java files, your, your Java, Java program, as an EMF model. To, uh, sorry. What would be great uh, 
is to have a tool that lets you compare your uh, different, uh, your, uh, your different baseline, different snapshot of Java code, uh, and to be able to filter out all the changes that are breaking compatibility to make uh, creating a report very easy. But to do that, we have to understand a little bit uh, what is the result of a comparison with EMF compare. So a comparison uh, is basically a set of changes, and the first kind of changes is uh, the reference changes, so the changes in the, within the reference of the model, and it points to the reference from your eCore model, and also to the value of the, uh, the value that has changed uh, within this reference. And it is exactly the same thing for all the attributes in your model. Uh, it points to the attributes in your eCore model, and it points to the value that has changed. So let's go to the demo again, and let's see how EMF Compare could uh, help us to implement such a tools. So here I got just a very simple button to launch the comparison. Um, what is done behind the scene is uh, basically to take two snapshots uh, of the EMF Compare Java code. It takes the previous version of EMF Compare and the master branch, and in comp it compares it. It loads it add, uh, as an EMF model and then compares it with EMF Compare. So as you can see, we have a lot of differences. I got close to 2,000 differences, and here you can see all the changes that we made since uh, the last um, the last release of EMF Compare. For instance, in this class, um, not this one. For instance, in this class, uh, we added a method, and uh, we also changed the Java doc. And here you can see that we are reusing the Java comparison, so you have syntax highlighting and all these kind of pretty things that you want to, to get when you compare Java code, etc., etc. But it's still a lot of changes, uh, and to identify binary, uh, binary and breaking change uh, could be quite hard. Mm. With EMF Compare, you are able to provide your own filters to this view. So here, we implemented a filter to filter out all the changes that are not breaking binary compatibility. So if I activated this filter, you can see that now uh, about uh, all, every, um, most of the changes have been filtered out, and now I got only about 50 changes in this view that are only binary breaking change. So now it's much easier to go through those changes and to detect that there, we removed the method getChildren from this class and it will be a binary breaking change. And it's pretty easy to do, to do uh, such a thing. Let me show you. Here we implemented some of the rules that are listed on the uh, wiki page. I pointed you just before in the slide. Uh, so for instance, here it is a rule for breaking change uh, when you add a member to a Java class. So here we are defining a predicate on the output of EMF compare, which is a reference change there. And if the reference change is an addition uh, in a reference which is containment and whose value is a member of the Java class, then I will have to check all of these things to be sure that I do not break uh, the the binary compatibility. And this is all the code that we wrote to, to make the thing that I showed you just before. And we also provided this filter as an extension point. OK, so it can help you to handle Java very Breakage. Now, how can it, <coughs> how can it uh, help you to implement incremental transformation? So this is a situation. 
you got a model A, a data structure, A0, and you transform it in a new model, B0. Whatever the, the semantics of the transformation, but you got a new model. Very often, your model A0 uh, is edited, and you got a new version of this model A0, which is A1. And then you want to relaunch the transformation on it to get the new version of the transform model. But what happened is that you got now two models as the output. And this is not what you want. You want only one model. Actually, you want your transformation to update the initial transform model. And this is why EMF Compare can help you. Because EMF Compare can compare the two uh, mo initial models and produce the comparison, the results of the comparison as an output. And then you will be able to define your transformation not from the initial model as an input, but with the comparison as an input. So uh, instead of saying that from something in A, I want to create something in B, it is, uh, the transformation is about uh, when I add something uh, between two versions of A, I want to create something in B. And we got something about that. So I started out from a very simple use case, very common use case, which is a transformation from an object-oriented model to a relational model. And so what we want is from a class, I want a table with a primary key. And from a field in this class, I want a, a column in the, in the corresponding table, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so sorry. I got several versions of my A model, the, the class the class model, and what I want is to update the target. Okay. Uh, so my initial state is an empty A and an empty, an empty B. And the next iteration on the model A is just creating, creating a package. What I do, uh, the first lines are purely technical. I will not go into that. But what I want to do is to transform the results of the comparison. As you can see, the comparison is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm creating the scope of the comparison, uh, which is uh, the, the initial version of the model and the new version of the model. And then I am just saying to EMF compare to compare it. Um, so pretty straightforward, just two lines of code to compare two EMF models. And then I want to transform the results of this, co of this comparison. Then I have to handle uh, every differences that have been computed by EMF compare, uh, uh, one difference after another. So for instance, here, uh, I, want, I have to handle the change in a reference. And here I say that if the reference, if the change is about a class in my model, I want to handle it in a specific way. And if the change is an addition, I want to create, oops, sorry, I want to create a table with the name being the name of the original class, and I want to create a primary key, etc., etc. So the logic of the transformation which is implemented there. But it's quite straightforward to do. So let's do that with our first model. So what I want to do is to, my initial model is the empty one, and the new model is the one with the package. So I launch the transformation. I have to refresh the project. And now the target have a proper database, which is created. OK. Next, I got a new version of my, of my uh, object-oriented model with a book, with a class named book. So if I use the comparison of those two as an input and refresh my workspace, you can see that the model have been updated accordingly. And so on and so on. 
So the, definition, the transformation is really incremental. I am only updating the target by implementing the transformation in terms of the results of the comparison of the two initial models. But it can be cumbersome to, to define the transformation in these terms because you have to handle a lot of cases, corner cases, and sometimes it is not even doable. For instance, uh, if I rename the class book there, I have a lot of things to do there. I have to rename the table, and I have to rename also the, the, call, the primary key. And this is what I do there. But to implement all these cases, all the changes possible in the initial model may be cumbersome. So there is another kind of incremental transformation that is uh, possible to implement with female compare. So let's get back to our initial state with uh, the, the transformation of our two uh, initial model. And what you can do is to actually merge the results uh, of the two transformations. So you get your previous version, your new version of B, and as the MF compare lets you merge the changes that it computes, uh, you can automatically uh, retrieve the model B2 after that. But even better, if your model B0 has evolved, or someone has written something in that, uh, in a new version of this model, what you want is actually to merge this edited one and the, uh, the B1 model. But you want to take into account the B0 model because there may be conflict uh, between this edition and this edition that leads to the model B1. And as EMF compare is handling a uh, freeway comparison, you will be able to know if there are conflicts between all these models. And if there is no, or if you handle it manually, uh, you will get the model B3 thanks to EMF compare. So I will just show you the code to merge the model. It's pretty simple. So here's still the loading technical thing. And now, as you can see, uh, I am retrieving the original version of the database, the new version, sorry, of the database, which is the model B1. And here, the, new ver the old version, which is the model B0, I am comparing it. Um, I am, <coughs> sorry, uh, I am comparing it. Then I am retrieving, retrieving all the mergers that are available for the changes, and then applying the merger to each diff that have been computed. And then you will get the model B3 at the end, uh, which is the merge of B1 and B0. And now the transformation is very straightforward to implement because it is very procedural. <coughs> we made it. Incremental transformation. Uh, and we've gone through all our use cases. But I got one more thing to, to show you. Um, it's about graphical comparison because I, I only show you one uh, aspect of the uh, of the customization of EMF Compare uh, through filters, but we have many many other extension points to customize the UI. And for instance, uh, this is the kind of customization you can do, and which is provided actually by EMF Compare. Um, and here, I'm sorry, I will use some. Uh, very modeling thing uh, in this talk. It's just a papyrus model, so a UML model, and I want to compare those files. But I don't want to see the three viewers that we, show, that we see just before, but I want to reuse this view. So here, I am comparing the three files and defining which is the ancestor. So now I got some changes in the UML model, but I want to see also the changes in the graph, in the graphical view. And we customize EMF compare to display this kind of view when you are comparing a GMF based editor. So here you can see that there is an addition of an enumeration on the, um, on the left model that we also added 
a connector between um, uh, those two classes. And even you can see that here we are displaying a kind of ghost because this class has also been added. So we are displaying a ghost of this addition when you are, when you are looking as it, as it at, <coughs> at this change. And the same from the remote changes, for instance there. It's only a move. We change the coordinates of this uh, class. OK, so uh, we are close to the end. Uh, what you should remember about all of this? Uh, you should remember that once you have uh, a delta computation algorithm, which works on a lot of use cases. You got an, an infinite potential for use cases. You, you basically, whenever you think, oh, I should have the, the semantics of the changes that uh, uh, have been done during that, think EMF compare. Think, how can I inject it in EMF to be able to reuse EMF compare? Uh, it's really, really easy afterwards. Uh, because EMF compare will diff and merge this data for free. And also, uh, the UI may be quite, um, uh, quite high level for end users. The tree viewer may not be very usable for end users, but it is possible to customize it to, to provide your own view, you can imagine, to, to let your end user do the merge if there is uh, conflicts. So everything is online. Uh, it's available at, at this uh, URL. Um, we released the version 2.1 uh, for Kepler, so last June, and we will release uh, the 3.0 version for with Luna, along with Luna uh, next June. So this is why there are some few binary, binary breakage in the API. And I would be glad to answer a few questions, if, if any. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, as um, EMF Compare has been re reworked from scratch uh, between uh, 1.3 and 2.0, and uh, we basically break every API. Uh, so the question is, <laughs> did we do the same thing uh, for the 3.0? No, no it, it's minor changes uh, in some corners of EMF Compare. We want to fix it for the next version, but it's definitely not the same uh, order of magnitude of changes. Yes. So the question is, uh, sometimes we, we, we get changes that do not uh, relate, uh, doesn't seem to relate uh, to the changes that we made manually. Um, we are using some uh, heuristic to match elements, and then from this matching, uh, we are deducing the differences. Uh, this particular case is uh, the case of uh, multi-valued attributes, I think, and uh, we cannot match, except for strings, but we didn't implement it yet, uh, we, we cannot match uh, elements uh, through contents, based heuristics, uh, to say that this one has just uh, changed a little. So if it's not the same, we are considering that it is a removal and an addition, and not a change. But this is very specific to attributes, multi-valued attributes. Could you tweak that behavior? So yeah. Uh, I didn't show any customization of the engines. But ENF Compare is composed of uh, five engines from the matching one, which is matching the elements uh, either by ID or by, con uh, by uh, a dis distance heuristics, and to the conflict detector engine, you can customize everything uh, programmatically today, and hopefully uh, through some UIs 
uh, to choose which uh, engine you want to use in a specific context. No more question? So I'll be uh, around there uh, until tomorrow. Uh, and we have our booth, our OBO booth upstairs in front of the restaurant. So do not hesitate to, to come to me if you, if you have any more questions. Um, please uh, leave feedback for every session, and this one also, uh, on the website of the Eclipse Conference. It's very important to, to have feedback, see if you liked it or not. Um, but if you liked it, you should add feedback. And uh, I want to thank you all. <laughs>